First of all, mm. when you talk about faithfulness, mm -hmm. I meet a lot of married mm -hmm. Ghanaian men mm -hmm. who are looking for wives. <laughs> they are, wait, wait a minute. They are married already. They're married already, but they, they want an American wife. Wow. They want papers, you know. They want to, wow. they want to get to the U.S. and make dollars and be able to come really? over and take care of their families. Yeah, wow. definitely. Yeah. Guys, can you mean? What is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> so, so they're not you, coming for love. They're coming for papers. Oh, come on. You, I'm an American woman. Wow. So, so, I mean, I guess I wear mm -hmm. money on my face. I guess oh. I wear opportunity on my face. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants to... Hello guys and welcome back again to another amazing episode. This is a diaspora transition episode. As you guys all know, we speak to diaspora who move back from, you know, the diaspora and living here on the continent. We speak to them, we ask them, how is Ghana treating you? Is it easy here? Is it difficult? What's the challenges? And uh, on this show, we have here someone very special. She goes by the name Nana Abna. She's quite famous. She's everywhere. I'm seeing her on the screens here in Ghana. If you don't know this lady, you will definitely live under a rock. So without further ado, uh, Nana Abina, welcome on the show. Thank you. Wow, it's, it's, it's good to see you it's in person. I've been watching your episode and I'm enjoying them. Aww. So I'm like, wow, I have a lot of questions for you. Sure. And that you're doing something great. You are actually clearing a lot of misconceptions through your videos. And uh, we'll talk more about that in the video. But for those watching you for the first time who don't know who you are, can you please briefly introduce yourself <laughs> okay, to the people well, watching? My name is Nana Abina. And I've been coming to Ghana since 1995. Mm -hmm. I was initially invited to Ghana by Dr. Wade Nobles, who was uh, a college professor at San mm -hmm. Francisco State University. And he used to bring groups of professors to Ghana. And I was working on, with him on a, um, a project where mm -hmm. we were, um, it, was, it was centered around African traditional healing, okay. wow. you know, and HIV prevention. Mm. So oh, wow. that's the project we were working on in Oakland, California. Mm. So then when he told me every year he brought professors here, I said, the next time you go to Ghana, I want to go. Wow. And I did. I came along with him. That was 1995. Wow. Um, on that journey, I actually met a traditional priest and his family in Kumasi mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who invited me to come and stay six Mm -hmm. Months. I stayed six months on that trip and I brought my two children with me. Wow. We stayed and we became family and then I started coming back and forth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then people started saying, hey, the next time you go, I want to go with you. Wow. And so it has snowballed from there. Wow. It has brought me to this day. Um, so now I'm doing tourism. Mm -hmm. I'm also doing acting as you, yes, as you know. Yes. And just a lot of other things here. I'm wow. so happy to be here. Wow. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. So 1995, was when you first heard about Ghana, even before the trade started. Even wow. Before the trade started. I was wow. here in 1995. How was it us. when you arrived at that time? How was Ghana then? You know what? When I, when I first arrived, I just remember, this is what I vividly remember. Mm -hmm. I remember walking out of the airport, mm -hmm. and the first thing that hit me was the heat. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, I had never... I've been in hot weather before, yes. but it was a different kind of heat, mm -hmm. and that's the first thing in the, in the smell. Wow. And then there was just a sea mm -hmm. of black people Wow. standing there looking at me, and I was looking at them, and I just remember that day so vividly. Mm -hmm. And then we got into a car, and we drove to Kamasi, mm -hmm. and my journey began from being here from began. Wow. Yeah. Well, now, was it, um, what triggered, because I think... People have heard a lot about Ghana, Africa, mm -hmm. but they were not like moved to like, okay, the next time you're going to take me, what would you say triggered it for you, for you to start thinking, oh, I need to go to the motherland. And when the opportunity came, you picked it up. Okay. First of all, mm -hmm. being a black woman, mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> you know, and I've always been a seeker, okay. right? So, and I love to travel. Mm -hmm. The first time I left the country was actually to India. Whoa. And, um, and that was because I had the opportunity to go to India. That's the only reason why I went to India before Whoa. I came to Africa. Wow. Um, and um, yeah, so it was, it, it, it had to do with me getting to want to know myself, okay. who I was, you know, mm -hmm. where black people came from, mm -hmm. um, the history of it, you know. And wow. at that time, I didn't see Africa as a large continent. continent. Yeah. You know, you thought it was a country? <laughs> 
I, I, no, not that I thought it was a country, okay. but I gave it the size in my mm. thinking, the size of a country. Okay. You know, was a, it because of what you've seen on BBC and CNN and stuff? Like absolutely. That? You know, I, I just didn't. Um, I didn't have the vision, or I didn't have enough knowledge. Mm. Um, I hadn't done my own research to know of all the different languages yes. and cultures and people and places mm. and how large it is. Because even yeah. on the map, I see these maps. And Africa just looks little. so little, but mm -hmm. to think that you can fit five United States into yes. the continent yes. of Africa, yes, yes, that's something different. The lies are huge, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, I got to add this part. Mm. When I traveled, I remember traveling, mm -hmm. you know, and coming back and I was saying to myself, my ancestors left here as cargo. Yes. In ships. Yes. And here I am flying back on the wow. wings of a bird. Yes. Right? Yes. In that airplane. Mm -hmm. We were over the Atlantic Ocean in an airplane for seven straight hours. Yes. And when I started to conceptualize that, mm -hmm. seven hours mm -hmm. in an airplane mm -hmm. over water alone, mm -hmm. that's a lot yes. of water. Yes. That's a whole lot mm -hmm. of water. So that's yeah. the other part I, I just wow. remember about my first trip. Wow. We welcomed well, you on the continent. You've been here for a long time <laughs> now, but I just welcome you again. And uh, my next question is, right? You've, you've been here for a long time. Well, right? I've, I've come and I've gone. You've gone, okay. I've come back, okay. went to China, okay. came back. Oh, yeah, and then you're saying India. I didn't know you went to India. I, I was, went to I India. was there too. I was in India and I was also in China. Oh, <laughs> wow. So we have a what lot a coincidence. Coming. Yeah. Okay, so um, I want to ask you this How do you think black Americans in the US look at Africa? That was your story. That's how you looked at Africa. But let's say the majority of black Americans. How do you think they see Africa? Well, it all depends on too on mentality. You know, mm -hmm. you have different kinds of people mm -hmm. everywhere. So you got some people that are educated, mm -hmm. some people that are not. Mm -hmm. You know, I, because I'm into tourism, I talk to all kinds of people, and I'm always encouraging people to come home. Yes. So I get that I have the privilege of varying perspectives. Okay. Um, if a person really hasn't studied, you know, and they really haven't, not in terms of coming all the way to Africa, maybe they haven't even left their own community. Exactly. Maybe they're just stuck right mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. in East Oakland mm. or South Central LA and they mm -hmm. haven't moved beyond that. Mm. So when you talk about coming as far as Africa, first of all, do you have a passport? Yes. You know, just taking those little mm -hmm. steps. Some people just are not interested at all. Mm. Wow. And then you have those people who have um, heard negative things. Wow. About wow. Africa. Well, wow. which part of America did you grow up? I grew up in San Francisco, California. San Francisco. Okay, so growing yeah. up there, how was it like in the U.S.? Oh, I loved <laughs> it. I love um, San Francisco. It, mm. it gave me the diversity mm -hmm. that I have. Um, San Francisco is a melting pot of everybody. Wow. It's a melting pot of everybody. Wow. And so, I, I, growing up in San Francisco was really a blessing for okay. me. It so, really helped to shape the person okay. that I am. So, but what were you doing in the U.S. at that time before you got the invite to leave? To leave? Oh, be, <laughs> before I, I... Okay, so I was doing a lot of community work. Okay. Um, I was doing theater. Mm -hmm. um, I was a student on and off. Mm -hmm. um, I was a seeker, mm -hmm. you know, um, traveling a little bit. Okay. Just doing a lot of study. I've always... I like entertainment. Mm -hmm. I like just okay. people mm -hmm. so i've always been active in my community wow. now you made mention of your tourism why yeah. did you think it was so important for you to now invite people to to leave the u.s to see africa for themselves why did you feel like it was so important it to was do that? It, it, it was and is important to me mm. that's not a past tense this is it's, it's, oh, is yes. important mm -hmm. to me it's important to me because i i want i want people to know um what Africa truly is. Okay. And I think that Africa has a lot to offer, mm -hmm. even us. Mm -hmm. You know, when I say us, I mean African Americans. Okay. Uh, you know, a place that we can actually identify with and call home. Mm. You know, um, a lot of times we're mistreated in the United States. Yes. There's a lot of racism mm -hmm. and just a lot of self hate, mm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and all these things that keep us down, down mm -hmm. as the underdog. And so when we come here, it's like, for me, I just experience opportunity. Wow. You know, everything is open. Mm -hmm. You don't have all the red tape mm -hmm. that you have in the U.S. Mm -hmm. you what know? are some of the red tapes? Let's oh! talk about it. <laughs> the red tape, all of these licenses that mm -hmm. you have to get, mm -hmm. and you know, all this riffraff and all this applying for jobs. Mm -hmm. You may not get it, you, mm -hmm. you may. Here mm -hmm. in Africa, 
you have the opportunity to create. If you are not doing something, mm. you can't blame anybody else. Wow. Because wow. here, you know, people are doing for self. Wow. You know, you wow. they're not waiting for people to give you a exactly. job. Exactly. You know. Exactly. But you do what you can. It, yeah. And you use your talents and you mm -hmm. and what you know to get what you want. Mm. And so I just I just appreciate this. But he said that America is the land of opportunities and you're talking about uh, <laughs> you don't agree. <laughs> it is the land. Okay, so being born in America, mm. I appreciate my I, I can't I can't fully just discredit America. Right. I appreciate being given the opportunity mm. for my education. Mm -hmm. I appreciate my citizenship. Mm -hmm. I appreciate all those things. You know why? Because right. now I'm blessed to be able to come back and share it at home. Yes, yes, yes. yes. All right? Mm -hmm. I don't have to use what I've been given there. Mm -hmm. I can use it anywhere in the world that I want to. Mm -hmm. And I'm choosing home. Wow. Where my ancestors. Wow. That brings me to my next question. Why did you choose Ghana? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, Ghana chose me. Okay. Like I said, um, Dr. Wade Nobles was my gateway to Ghana, mm -hmm. and he had been bringing mm -hmm. college professors to Ghana. But we have fifty-five countries. Yeah, but see, he he was bringing he mm -hmm. was bringing professors to Ghana. Okay. On his tours. Okay. So when I said I want to go with you, mm. this is where I came. Okay. Okay. And when I came here mm -hmm. um, on that tour is when I met. Burying mm -hmm. people and you know you build friendships whenever somebody comes to Ghana, you know yeah, how it is yes, true, true. everybody wants to talk to you they mm -hmm. want to get your number mm -hmm. they want to keep mm -hmm. in contact mm -hmm. so those these are the only friends I had wow. were Ghanaians mm -hmm. so when I got ready to come back to Ghana mm -hmm. to come back to Africa mm -hmm. this is where I, I came where now, my friends were I want to know when you told your family like listen I am going to the continent whether you like it or not what was the uh, kind of feedback you got from even friends and family at that time? Okay, so um, my grandmother, mm -hmm. my maternal grandmother, mm -hmm. um, she's like my second mom. Okay. She was very, very nervous. Wow. Um, I was the first person in my immediate family to travel outside the country. Wow. And the first place and I, w I went to India. Yes. And I tagged my, my when I went to India, I took my six-year-old daughter with me. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother was just like nervous, wow. you know. She's really afraid, you know, being so far away, if something happens, how can I get to you? Mm. She just never had this experience, so. Wow. And then when I came to Africa, even right now, my father still says, when I invite him here, and mm. I've been coming since 95, he knows that mm -hmm. I live here, he knows mm -hmm. that I come here. He's still like, what do I want to go to Africa for? Wow. I'm not African. Wow. He tells me that all really? the time. He does with his words. My father tells me all the time, he's not African. Wow. He's Why do you African. think that is, though? He's I mean, I think this is not the first time hearing something like yeah. that. I met a, a black American when I was in China. Right. And then I was like, bro, you should come back home. Yeah. You know, let's, let's, you know, show you what we have back home. It's like, bro. I understand where you're coming from, yeah. but I'm not an African. And it kind of shook me. That. I'm like, okay, yeah. so what are you? And he kind of asked me a very intelligent question as well. He said, like, then where are the African peoples also coming from? Yeah. If every black person is coming from Africa, then mm -hmm. where are the Africans coming mm -hmm. from? Which cut the conversation very short because mm -hmm. he just made his mind he's not African. Yeah. But I don't know why that is because most people think like that. What do you think? Well, is, you know, is it, is it, I can't answer for everybody mm -hmm. because that is definitely not my feeling. Right. But people have a disconnect, you know, yeah. and a lot of it maybe it has to do with just um, education. Because mm. if you don't know your history, if That's you don't true. know the history of how we got to be African American in the first place, mm. then you really, there's no connection for you. That is very true. But for somebody who has studied mm -hmm. and you know how we got from one shore mm -hmm. to the other shore, how right. we crossed the Atlantic and got to America in the first place, mm -hmm. then there is a level of connection. Wow. Wow. You know, so it just depends on the person. That's amazing. You are seeing so many beautiful things about Ghana, by the way. And you, what are you seeing in Ghana that I'm not seeing? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And I've talked to people about this. Mm -hmm. And I find it very unfortunate mm -hmm. that African Americans have a different experience that a regular Ghanaian might have. Wow. Like, I've, I've seen privileges that I have mm -hmm. in your own country that mm -hmm. you wouldn't have. Wow. You know, the way that I'm treated, um, the respect that I get, and then um, the, the way being made easy for me. Wow. wow. Based on me being American. Yeah. It, that's a privilege, you think so? <laughs> Seriously. And, I, and, and it's sad, but it's true. Mm. That's been my experience. Wow. You know, I, just simple little things. Wow. You wow. know, um, a person might offer me water mm. somewhere. 
Mm. They don't, wouldn't even offer their wow. fellow. What are the differences? Say? Things that you know were done to you that you really appreciated it here in Ghana that you wouldn't get it in the U.S. Just being the way we made easy. Whatever you want to be. Mm. Do you want to be an actress? Yes. Okay, here. <laughs> you know, here, yes. here it is. Mm -hmm. Here's an opportunity for being mm -hmm. an actress. What do you want to be? You want to mm -hmm. do business? Okay, I'll, wow. I'll do business with you. Wow. You know, it's like. So I haven't Africa, had any. Mm -hmm. I haven't had any stops. Wow. Whatever I've wanted to do here, mm -hmm. whatever I've wanted to create here, I've gotten the support from my brothers wow. and my sisters here wow. in Ghana. Where being in, in the U.S. it's not that easy. Mm. Are you saying Africa opened the, its arms to you? Oh, absolutely! Wow. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about the, your acting. Since you brought that up, I've I've seen what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And the way that you are acting, and there's a message within this, you know this episodes that I've seen so far mm -hmm. and you are trying to correct some misconception and the narrative black people living on the continent Africans have about the diaspora is moving back we know you oh she's coming from the US she's rich she's coming with a back load of money and then we tend to treat um, you know them differently trying to extort and stuff like that and I see that message in your videos mm -hmm. and everything why was that important and how did it even all come about okay so First of all, I didn't I didn't write that script, oh, okay. but I definitely had input into it. Mm -hmm. And myself and um, the director Caleb, he okay. also wrote the script. Mm -hmm. We had a conversation about it, mm -hmm. you know. And there are you will learn that there are certain misconceptions mm -hmm. that Africans have about African Americans, right? And African Americans have, have about, about Africans, Africans. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that that's a big one, right? That we come with money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all of us don't <laughs> come with money. Now, when we bring what money we have, mm -hmm. it goes a lot further. Yeah. As we were just talking about earlier before yeah. we started this interview, mm -hmm. that right now, today, the dollar is... It's 11. Is 11, 11 <laughs> CDs to $1. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. I can bring $100 over here and have more than a person would make in three yeah. months. Yes, yes. It's Indeed. just the truth. Indeed. Right? Indeed. So that's the beauty of it. Wow. And that's what I try to get people to see. Mm. Don't you want your money to go farther? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If someone is watching right now, <laughs> listen to you up for them. <laughs> Don't you want your money to go farther? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you mm -hmm. make dollars here? You can make, you, why don't you just work at home for six months wow. and come and live in Ghana for wow. six months? Really? Seriously. Wow. Why not? Wow. Why not? Because in America, what we're doing, we wake up. You know, we fix breakfast, we send the children to school, we go to work for eight hours, mm. we come home, we cook dinner, we watch a little television, we go to sleep, and then You do repeat. that again. Wow. But in Ghana, you're living. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're living. You're doing interviews on Monday mornings. Mm. Mm. In the middle of the day, <laughs> while people are at work right now, you know, this is my work. Yeah. Right? Which is a so, beautiful thing. It's a beautiful but thing. I've seen a lot of um, um, African Americans move into the continent, which is a beautiful thing, yeah. right? But um, a lot of people come with, uh, America is doomed. America is going down. I want to ask you, what is what do you think is going on in America right now? There's a lot going on in America, and you know what? I don't give it any. Um, I don't give it a lot of energy mm. because I like to stay positive. Good. So I'm focusing mm -hmm. on right here, right now, mm -hmm. where I am, mm -hmm. and what I want to accomplish. I don't want to think about okay. um, where I'm not. True. And all the True. things that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you're on a continent. Let's talk about Ghana. Yeah. Let's talk about. How Ghana. are you adapting since you, you moved back? Yeah, to Ghana. See, this is different. Accra, <laughs> when I say this, mm. Accra is different. Accra, when okay. I lived in, in, um, Kumasi. in Kumasi, mm. Ghana before I was living okay. in Kumasi. Mm. So this is my first experience with Accra. I like wow. it though. Wow. Really? I like it. I like um, all that it has to offer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm loving the people. I'm loving the diversity. I'm loving the opportunity. Mm. And, and, and it's just um, an opportunity, to, like I said, to build, mm. to create some wow. wonderful talented people here, mm -hmm. lots of beautiful events they create, mm -hmm. um, lots of networking opportunities, yes, and yes. I, I've, I've been having a great time. Wow. Now, I know, I know it wouldn't be all roses, like you just said, a beautiful thing, sure, it exists, but I, I think you've had some challenges. Let me tell you, you like... what my biggest challenge is. Mm -hmm. As much as I love mm -hmm. Ghana, mm -hmm. I have to say that there's one thing that I actually do not like about being here. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> that is how I'm always um, looked at as a cash cow. Mm. 
um, how people automatically think I have money. Mm -hmm. We talked about this a little earlier yes. because I'm American. Mm -hmm. Well, I experienced that. Mm -hmm. So I'm always feeling like I'm on the defense. Mm -hmm. Like I got to defend myself. I got to wow. look over my shoulder. Mm. You know, when I go to a market and I ask, how much is this mango? Mm. That might be five CDs, but for me it's 10. Wow. You know, or, mm. or if I'm, if, or if I'm going to get in a taxi, you know, how much do I have to pay to go to Accra from here? Yeah. Oh, 80 CDs. Mm -hmm. Where it might be 40. Mm -hmm. You know, so those, those, those types of things um, mm. disturb me the most. Okay. okay. You know, instead of just wow. seeing me as a sister mm -hmm. coming home, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, but um, let me add to that. Do you experience the Obroni thing here? I do experience the Obroni thing. <laughs> what yeah. do you think about that and how do you receive it? Or um, how do you handle that? Be, this being referred to as Obroni? Yes. A white lady, Ghana. right? Yes, yes. First of all, I'm not white. <laughs> I, but there yeah. are some Ghanaians yeah. who really think I'm a white lady. Mm. Like their concept really? in their, yes. Their concept in their mind, due to my complexion, is that I'm a white lady. <laughs> you wow. know, so 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 that part was a little different for me. And then mm -hmm. I had to, again, start thinking about just education. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my opportunity now to have a conversation with somebody and mm -hmm. really maybe show them a picture of a real white person. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and then to talk about the things that we have in common mm -hmm. yes. as just human beings, as black mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. You being from Ghana, me mm -hmm. being from America, but there are some things that I can find that we have wow. in common. What would you say you did differently that didn't kind of made those challenges make you go back to the um, U.S. to say, oh, I'm done with Africa, this is too much for me. What did you do differently that made you, you know, so comfortable living here? Made the decision to stay, you know, made the decision to stay and um, have the full experience mm -hmm. of being here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not always roses. There were some things that I'm still adjusting to. Like, you know, I don't like um, landlords crawling around the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I see a lizard in the house, mm -hmm. I still scream. Yeah. But that's the reality. This, that's Ghana. Wow. You know, wow. and just, um, just different, mm -hmm. just different subtle little things. Okay. Like, I don't expect that everywhere I go might have hot water, mm -hmm. or I don't expect that everywhere I might go might have a toilet. Mm -hmm. You know, I just don't have those kind of expectations okay. anymore because I know wow. that I'm not at home. Okay. You know, I, I appreciate them mm -hmm. when they're available, but I don't expect it everywhere. Wow. Now, it's very good you think that way because I've met um, some diasporans who made that frustrate them. You know, they're like, nah, I can do that. I would just rather go back to 9 to 5. Yeah. If someone is watching who have, you know, the interest of even moving back or have been here but have was not able to kind of live here, what advice do you have for them, or what would you, would you tell them to do differently the next time they come to the continent? I would, I would say focus more on, um, not necessarily a job, or mm -hmm. what am I gonna do when I get there. Mm -hmm. Like we do in the US, we, we go to school, and we have um, a job that we do, we might take on a profession. Mm -hmm. This is the key here. Right. I would say focus on your natural skills and your ability. Wow. And monetize those things, mm -hmm. because you can. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. and then it doesn't, whatever you're doing here, mm -hmm. it won't feel like work. Wow. It'll just feel like mm -hmm. fun, fun, mm -hmm. fun, but you're making money. You'd be surprised. Wow. You, talk, you spoke about money. I didn't talk about money. <laughs> what do you do that makes you so comfortable living here in Ghana? What do I do? Yeah. Well, oh, do, are you comfortable living in Ghana? Um, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm, I'm fairly comfortable. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm here. I just, I'm here with my, my mm -hmm. twins. I have two children here. Mm -hmm. Um, they're in school. I have all the things that I need. Mm -hmm. um, I have fun. Um, I have food. I have shelter. Wow. So I'm, I'm grateful. Wow. Let's I'm talk grateful. about your kids. Sure. You brought your kids with you yes. to Ghana. This is the second Africa. time. The second, second time. time. Yes. Wow. They are 30. You were telling them that. My twins are 13 now. They lived here. Um, we lived here when they were seven and eight. Wow. And we went back to the States and they just came back. back this year. I would love to speak to them to get their perspective on living in, sure. in Ghana. Sure. Well, um, if people are watching from the U.S. right now, okay, most people are watching from New York, uh -huh. okay, they are contemplating, is it a good decision to move to the continent? What do you have to say to them? I would say absolutely yes. Mm. And that's from my perspective okay. and my personal experience. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good decision because, first of all, 
travel period broadens your mind. Mm. You know, I, I've traveled um, several places and it broadens your mind. But mm -hmm. when you come home to your own, it's it, it, it gives your spirit something that we just don't get being in the U.S. Wow. What are some of the things? Um, um, we talk about knowledge of self. People can 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 really relate to that term. Mm -hmm. we, we talk about self knowledge, but 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 standing in it, mm. standing in it. Wow. You know, mm. hearing the language, mm -hmm. eating the food. Wow. You know, celebrating, going to the festivals, mm -hmm. experiencing the culture, and being immersed in ourselves. Wow. Is something that you just don't get in the U.S. Wow. Even if we, even even the cultural activities that we create there, we do the best that we can. But mm -hmm. we're not. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. It's not the same rhythm as mm -hmm. you get mm -hmm. when you're just here, mm -hmm. walking on the soil well, and being with the people, and being wow. with your own. So, that's again, that's my experience, and um, wow. I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. That's I'm, amazing. I'm really, really grateful. Let's say they are convinced. Okay, they um, want to move back, but. They want to come with a job or even come do something on their continent, come create jobs. Um, you've been here for a little while. Mm -hmm. What would you say you've, you've worked, some kind of businesses you've seen thrive, you've seen, you know, start from your scratch and have thrived and uh, give them some few businesses you think would thrive if they should come back. Okay, um, definitely um, tourism. Tourism, okay. That's, that's, that's what I do. I've been mm -hmm. doing that um, and that kind of, that business of mine created itself. Okay. Um, um, spa business. Mm. Um, I've had a spa um, for some time, Wow. and um, that's been lucrative. Mm -hmm. um, those are things that I enjoy. Um, taking the spa outside mm -hmm. has been something that I really enjoy because I love nature. So just, okay. again, being creative. Mm. What, are you, what are the things you like to do? I used to go and sit at waterfalls mm -hmm. right here in Ghana and enjoy. Wow. I said, okay, well, what if, what if I brought a <laughs> massage table out wow. and set it up at the waterfall? Mm -hmm. Can I make money like this? Absolutely. People mm -hmm. want to have a mm -hmm. massage under a waterfall. You see. So you have to just find yourself, find mm -hmm. your own niche and what you like. Wow. Yeah, what, what mm -hmm. lights you up. I've never thought about things. that. That's a very good idea. Yes. So, you know, you just go on with what, what you like. <laughs> wow. Wow. Let's, let's talk about what you're currently, you already said what you're doing here on the continent, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But apart from the tourism and the acting, you're doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. What would you say um, are some things you're currently, uh, currently working on or even your future projects? Oh, uh, okay. Like? So I, uh, right now I'm mm -hmm. in the midst of, um, I'm bringing um, something really special mm -hmm. to uh, a docu-series. I don't want to talk too much about okay. it. Okay, it's not out I'm, yet. I'm working mm -hmm. on a docu-series mm -hmm. that will um, involve all 16 mm -hmm. of the regions here, so I'm really, really excited about that. Mm -hmm. Always, always looking for collaborations with okay. other people who are creative. Mm -hmm. um, working on uh, a YouTubers, an African YouTubers Summit. Okay. The first one okay. happened last year with mm -hmm. excellence, so we're mm -hmm. taking it to mm -hmm. another level this yeah. year. Mm -hmm. um, and just, I want to help to expand mm -hmm. Uh, the, the movie cinem cinematic industry here, wow. um, bringing people from home here mm -hmm. to collaborate and okay. do projects awesome. collectively. Mm -hmm. So working on a lot of wow. different things. You are doing amazing on the content. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want you to really um, talk to me more about your, your tourism. You've been bringing people from the diaspora to Ghana since 1995. Mm -hmm. That's, that's not easy. That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell me about how it started and even the journeys and everything that you've been doing in the tourism industry uh, here in Ghana okay. as well. Yeah. So um, Nana Abana Tours, mm -hmm. as it's known today, mm -hmm. started very, very, very genetically. Like I wow. said, I was invited here by Dr. Wade Nobles and then once I got back to the U.S. and started going and coming on my own, every time I would come, friends, family, and then extended people from people who knew them. It was mm. by word of mouth. Wow. Oh, this lady's going to Ghana. Mm. You know, you might want to go with her because a lot of people don't want to travel on their own. So I started just bringing people wow. like that. So wow. then um, it started, the groups got a little bit larger, larger. And I'd say up until today, I, I, I brought nearly a thousand people to Ghana. Thousand? Um, individuals, groups. Yes. Wow. Since 95. Wow. Yeah. And so, of course, we go to, I always go to Cape Coast, mm -hmm. um, to, the, mm -hmm. to the Slave Castle there, okay. and then travel throughout the various regions. I customize tours. Oh, wow. Some people are interested. Private tours and Yeah, stuff. private tours. Some people are interested. They come just for agriculture. Mm. Some people come for business opportunities. Mm. 
Some people come for land acquisition, so various things. People, I have an entertainment tour okay. where artists come and they collaborate with other artists. Oh, wow. So I have uh, nature tours, various interests. Wow. Right? So now I customize wow. and just... That's awesome. Yeah. And you made mention of the Cape Coast Castle. You've mm -hmm. been there. Can you tell me the really first nice. time yeah. that experience, the spiritual connection that you had when you first visited the dungeons in Cape Coast? For me, I heard voices in the dungeon. I mean, wow. seriously, my, my, um, my spirit was just, um, it was taken. Wow. And it was, um, it, was, it, was, it was traumatic for me. Wow. Um, I remember that day, and I remember crying oh. inside the castle. And then mm. once I left, I just, um, it, was a, it was an experience. Would yeah. you say people should should experience Absolutely, this absolutely. You mm -hmm. know, because then I was blessed to walk through the door of return. Mm -hmm. um, as much as I felt the despair of it, I also felt the gratitude for being one to return. Mm -hmm. And I feel like my being here is an answer to a prayer. You wow. know, like I can imagine what it was like watching your loved ones or people you mm -hmm. knew disappear in the horizon mm. on a ship and you don't know where they're going. Yeah. They don't know where they're going. Mm -hmm. Someone's children, someone's brother, someone's friend, someone's husband, someone's wife being took away. I would pray that they returned. Mm. So I just feel like those of us who are returning, that's an answer wow. to the prayers of our ancestors that we one day return and here we are. So now what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. That we're here, what are we going to do? Celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. Yes. Now, I don't want to leave out the most important, <laughs> one of the most important questions I have uh, on my list right now. Okay. Dating in Ghana. Have you tried dating? I have tried dating in Ghana, yes. Wow, really? Yes, I have. Tell me about it. They say Ghanaian men are the most faithful men in the whole of West <laughs> Africa. <laughs> I'm telling you. Who this... are they faithful to? Huh? To who? In a relationship. Ghanaian men. Are you sure? They are number one. If you're watching this, <laughs> and, and am I lying? Well, what is your experience? Oh, what is my experience? dating in Ghana or dating a Ghanaian man? You, the typical we, Ghanaian man. It was interesting that you said that they're the most faithful. So I'm like faithful to who? So mm -hmm. this is my. You want to hear? Now, can I just be truthful here? Yes, please. All right, let's please. let's talk candidly here. Yes. First of all. Mm. When you talk about faithfulness, mm -hmm. I meet a lot of married mm -hmm. Ghanaian men mm -hmm. who are looking for wives. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait a minute. They are married already. They're married already, but they, they want an American wife. Wow. They want papers. You know, they want to, wow. they want to get to the U.S. and make dollars and be able to come really? home and take care of their families. Yeah, wow. definitely. Yeah. Guys, Ghanaian men. What is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> so, so they're not coming for love. They're coming for papers. Oh, come on. I'm an American woman, wow. so so I mean, I guess I wear mm -hmm. money on my face. I guess oh. I wear opportunity on my face. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants to wow. do better. So w was it every encounter or every date that you've been to? Was it the same? It, or you know, it's it's the same thing. And again, wow. I go back to that conversation I had earlier mm -hmm. about just always being on, looking over my shoulder and having to be on guard because oh, wow. you know you, you you always question like, well, what is the real motive? Yeah. You love me. Yeah. In a day. Mm -hmm. In a week, mm -hmm. you love me in mm -hmm. a month. Mm -hmm. It's too so, quick. Well, guys, just sometimes slow down. <laughs> Give yourself a month, okay, or two, before you say you like you like somebody. And they so, don't, they don't use the like where they say love. Oh, I love you, mommy. Wow. Yes. Wow. So, wow. you know, so... Um, so you think it's fake love? Yeah. Because I've, I've had people who are like, I travel to Ghana to meet my, uh, to be fiancé. And now I'm single and I'm thinking of staying in the country or going back. If someone is watching from the US, UK, the diaspora, they've met their Ghanaian loved one, they want to move back. What advice do you have for them? You know, I, I would just say be careful <laughs> be because careful. I, can't, I can't generalize and say that mm -hmm. every Ghanaian man who really? meets an American woman mm. is just wants his green card or just wants to go to America or just wants money. I, I can't say that. Okay, it's coming for all. No, it can't be for all, mm. but it's definitely for some, mm. um, and definitely for many. Mm. You know, so um, I would just say be careful okay. and tread lightly. Okay. You know, be on your guard. Okay. You know, and don't be afraid to mm. be alone. Mm. Find peace in just being with yourself until that right person comes along, whether they're from Ghana, mm. China, India, the U.S., or wherever. Mm. Flow with that. 
Wow, but you didn't really tell me if you've dated. dated. <laughs> uh, that's what I want to know. And are you single or you're dated? Let's hear it. Um, Spill I, the tea. I, I, I am not mm -hmm. single anymore. Dated. <laughs> you're dating now. I'm dating now. Congratulations. Yeah. So, but okay. he's not Ghanaian. My fitness is hard. What, what is, is he? He's, he's from Africa. Okay. Yeah. We are still, we are yeah, still so home. We're, so we're, okay. still, we're, still, we're still working there. Yeah. Okay. I like yeah. that. I so like yeah. That. And that's working wow. out pretty good. Now so. let me ask you this before we skip to the, the next yeah. question. What would you say you wish you knew before moving back to the continent or moving to Africa? What I wish I knew? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, honestly, I can't think of anything that I wish I knew because mm -hmm. I, I really didn't have any expectations. expectations. Okay. I came with an open mind and an mm -hmm. open heart and spirit just to get whatever my ancestors wanted me mm -hmm. to get, to be, be fully in that mm -hmm. experience and mm -hmm. present. So I can't say wow. that there's anything that I wish I knew before wow. coming. Wow. But what would you say people should watch out before they move to the continent? Um, I, I, I want them to come prepared. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just, don't, don't just come here thinking mm -hmm. that, okay, I'm here now. Okay. You know, come with a, some kind of plan, mm -hmm. you know, where do you see yourself in a year? Where are you going to live? You mm -hmm. know, um, how are you going to support yourself? You know, you, you set all those things up and you really think those things through before you come so that you don't have a short run and then you have to run back home yeah. because you just weren't prepared. Mm -hmm. So give yourself time. Don't rush and get here when you can. Wow. Well, what I normally do is I, I wanted to put your number and then your Instagram on the screen so that the men can shoot their shots. <laughs> But you are off the market, and now I don't know what to do. I'm going to leave it anyway. No, no, no. I need, I need my number, and I need yeah, my Instagram, Instagram on the yes, screen yes. for other reasons, yes. for collaborations. Instagram? My mm -hmm. Instagram, you can find me under Nana Abana mm -hmm. Official. Official, okay. On Instagram, mm -hmm. Nana Abana Official. Mm. I'm also there under Nana Abana Tours if you're interested in taking okay. a tour mm -hmm. or customizing a tour mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. your liking. You can find me there as well. Guys. I always, I need to do my due diligence. I should have, knew it. <laughs> but I'm going to put the Instagram there. They can still shoot their shot. You do know one fun thing about guys? What's that? No matter how long you've been in a relationship or whatever, even if you're married to some of them, they're still going to shoot their shot. Well, you know, polygamy is a thing. What? do you think about polygamy <laughs> ask me what do i think about women who can have more than one man what do you think about women who can have more than one man <laughs> <laughs> are you supporting that what do you think? I, I, I think that we're moving towards hmm. um being more open-minded let me okay. just say that really okay. yeah. so you are willing or can you accept that <laughs> Let's be honest here. Let's be honest here. Me personally, mm. I only want one man. Okay. I want I want one man that can be enough for me. Mm. And I think I found that person. So I'm So good. you're good. Yeah, I'm good. So if some ladies out there is like, listen, I, I, I can take care of two men if I want to. <laughs> I want to go back to my roots of being an African. I want to marry two men. What what do you think? I, I'd say if it works for mm. you and the men agree, go for it. Okay, now let's flip no? the table. All right. Men Having two wives. Listen, the mm. same thing. If it works for you and the women agree, go for it. Or do you think you can I, love them equally? That I can't say. Mm. I mean, I, I can't. I can't measure the capacity of someone else's heart to love. I can only speak for myself. But you know, some mm. people can. But I, I, I will say this. Mm -hmm. I think that if a man chooses to take on more than one wife, he should be financially capable of supporting them both equally. Wow. You know, basically, she's saying you can't be broken date. No, 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 no. And you can't be broken date one woman, let alone two. So, wow, that's amazing. If you're ready, you're ready. If you're not, you're not. Period. Wow, really? Yeah. I think back in history, polygamy is not for broke people. <laughs> listen, the chiefs and the kids had multiple wives. I didn't think that normal people had multiple wives. I don't know, but it was not, technically not for broke people. Dating is not for broke people. Now in Ghana, what no. do you think? Period. We were talking behind cameras. <laughs> <laughs> and you heard the stories, the ladies asking for Momo. You can't date in Ghana. If what about the Momo. men asking for Momo too? It I have goes no experience both, that. Tell it us. It goes both ways. You were saying, you said papers. Yeah. They, what is, does it come to money, money too? too. Really? Ghanaian men? Absolutely. Wow. 
Absolutely. Give me Especially one scenario. a scenario where a younger man mm-hmm. might entertain an older woman. Wow. Right? Mm-hmm. Or might marry an older woman. Mm-hmm. Why would a 28 year old man marry a 65 year old unattractive woman? Which kind of. Are you talking about who? <laughs> Because you are very attractive. I don't know what you're talking about. But I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, did you say give you a scenario? Okay, okay. So that's okay. just. I'm just yeah, speaking in yeah, generally. Why? Yeah. Why? 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 What's what, what would It's you love. Don't you believe love uh, yeah. exists? Love is a beautiful thing. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's real. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, the answers are already. You know. You know so, what I'm saying. You know. Is. So you you have to think about these things. Yeah. And women, I want the women to think about this too. Really, does, mm-hmm. does he really, really, love genuinely me. love me, mm-hmm. or is there something well, that he wants from me? I had one situation where someone told me, like, I literally know this guy doesn't like me, like me, mm-hmm. but I love the attention he's giving to me, and. I won't get it anywhere. So even though I know he doesn't really love me, I might just stick with it. That's okay. If everybody's in agreement around it and that works for you, then by all means. If so, if, if you're being if you find some fulfillment mm-hmm. in you know giving, 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 and mm-hmm. having other people take, then do it. Mm. You know, it's wow. just you know. So there's still room for Ghanaian guys to shoot each other. Wow, it's good to know though. It's good to know. But thank, you for be, thank you for allowing me to be so candid. Oh yeah. In your presence. And I love I love the fact that you are <laughs> you are you are able to open up and tell us to this. So guys, if you're enjoying this conversation and you are liking it, please subscribe. Okay, that's the little <laughs> you can do. Now let's move on. Uh, you can't say all these things without rating Ghanaian men. You know, they are coming for the papers. You don't believe it's true love. You've dated here. Rate Ghanaian men on a scale of one to ten. You know, you know what I'm going to give them? I'm mm. going to give them a five. Five? The reason I'm giving them a five is because, again, mm. I said what I said, but I can't say that's true for every Everybody. single Ghanaian man. I'm sure that there wow. are some honest, loving, mm. sincere, committed men. men out there who want to be husbands and live the family life mm. and do the right thing by their wife. Are you trying to say Ghanaian men are not the most faithful in the, in the whole of West Africa? I don't think men in general are the most faithful. Hmm. I don't think it has to do with being Ghanaian. I think it just has to do with being men. male. Yeah, that's my personal opinion. I, but, but then again, too, mm-hmm. now see, we get into a whole different conversation. Okay. We might have to go into a part two. Okay. Because then now we're moving into my, mm-hmm. my, my whole thought process around mm-hmm. whether or not um, monogamy is mm-hmm. really um, the norm. Okay. And okay. biologically, I don't really think it is. I think monogamy is a social construct, and I think that um, one that our society has placed on this. So it 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 it, it lends it's to not things natural, like so yeah. Everybody's... So so it lends to things like cheating, mm-hmm. you know. But is it really cheating, or am I just being? Oh, you don't think it's cheating? Well, here, see now. Okay. We can, I don't think. Should it's, we do part two, it, guys? Are you enjoying it? <laughs> I don't think it's cheating if everybody is in agreement, agreement. right? Uh, no, I think this is still cheating. How? How are they cheating? If, if, if I agree, if I'm your, if I'm your wife, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. and I agree that you can entertain another person mm-hmm. or persons, mm-hmm. how is it cheating if everybody is in agreement? Yeah, I wish I had a girlfriend who can <laughs> agree. <laughs> yeah, now it's cheating if I'm your wife and mm-hmm. she's there and she's there and I don't know nothing about it or they don't know about me and you're just going back and forth mm-hmm. and it's, that's a mess. Okay. Okay. But if ever we're all in agreement and mm-hmm. we have some kind of um, civility to our interaction with one another, I think it's okay, personally. Okay. So the married men who proposed to you, were they wearing rings or what was this? Name? Some people will take off their rings. Just really? Yeah, some people will take, it's a, it's a game. You know, I understand it though. I really wow. do understand. I understand, um, I understand poverty mm. and I understand wanting to go farther. Mm-hmm. I understand not being able to get a visa to mm-hmm. travel to America. Um, to America, paradise. Yeah, well, it's paradise for mm-hmm. you. So you you want to go, mm-hmm. and you can't get a visa. So mm-hmm. by which means can I get a visa? Get I can mar- marry. Get married is an easy way, mm-hmm. right? The ninety day visa they have mm-hmm. those. So you know, so I, I I get it. Yeah. But you know, again, it comes down to um, agreement. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. be real with me. You don't have to tell me you love me. Mm-hmm. Tell me that you want a visa then. If I tell you, are you going to give it a visa? <laughs> yeah. We might be able to work something out. Okay, okay. You know, there might mm-hmm. be something that we can work out. Mm-hmm. So, but, you know, 
personally, again, this is personal for me. Mm -hmm. I just like honesty. Okay. I like people to be straight up and forward wow. about things. So if you can be that with me, then, you know, hey, talk to yeah. me. If you can't, mm -hmm. stay away. Stay away. Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> now you know what to do. <laughs> wow. I really like you. I like the way you, you think. And I think most we need most women to think like that. Uh -huh. Most women. Well, most, you have to change your thinking, too. Mm. You know, you the have men? to. Yeah, men mm. have to change your thinking, too. So we should be open to accepting. Absolutely. Okay. From the very beginning, mm. we have to have conversations mm. that, first of all, we have to be able to agree that we can yeah. have conversations where we, where we can speak candidly yeah. and tell each other the mm -hmm. truth. Now, when you tell me the truth, I can't get all angry and upset but about that's it. A, that's the case. We see a lot of ladies, like, imagine you telling your, your girl that, listen, I want to, you know what I'm saying? You probably get slapped or something like that. <laughs> but, but they'll be like, you can be honest with me. I'm not going to get crazy. And the way you did is like... But imagine if you told her that mm -hmm. from the beginning, okay. as soon as you met her, listen, yeah. I'm, I'm open to having multiple partners. Are you? Hmm. Now, if you guys are on the same page, she says yes. I am. Or no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. If she says, no, I'm not, and you are, then right there, you know it's not a match. Yes, no so why go forward in the relationship? Because then, if you are, you're mm -hmm. subject to cheating mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. And she's subject to get angry at some point. Mm -hmm. You know, so wow. communication is key. It's very personal. You've been saying you're open, quite open, but I want to ask you a personal one. Okay, go ahead. Have you been cheated on? Absolutely. Here in Ghana. Absolutely. Because I remember in your skits that you did, uh, your episodes, your, your videos that you do, there's a storyline where your best friend was cheating uh, with your boyfriend in yeah. that video. Yeah. Well, that, that, for first of all, mm -hmm. that's not a true storyline. Okay. That's, that's one that okay. we, that we um, conceived mm -hmm. based on this mm -hmm. conversation mm -hmm. pretty mm -hmm. much, you know. Um, that didn't happen to me. You, okay. But so there are... I do know cases like mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and sure, so yeah, I've definitely been cheated on. Not only you, I've had people who come to me and like, I don't think any men are 10 out of 10 like you said on your show. I think they are maybe a four. I'm like, really? It's like, yeah, they cheat all the time and they think it's normal. Uh -huh. That's why I asked you. So what, what, so how do you rate an name in? Well, 10 out of 10. <laughs> do you really? You say, so, and why? <laughs> Listen, I think you are in Ghana, and okay. that's why you, you see it like how you see it. But out there, out there, out of Ghana, Africa, Ghanaian men are top notch. Really? Very, very reserved and trust me. So other, country, <laughs> other countries here in Africa, yeah. I wouldn't find men no. like Ghanaian men. The best one you find is Ghanaian. And that's even the one that you think is not faithful. Oh the my others gosh. are just, trust me. So now I'm worried. No, I'm no, worried. No, no, no. Stick with Ghanaian men, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, don't come for me or come. Let's share my opinion. <laughs> you can come for me. If you don't like anything that I said today, come for me. We'll talk about it. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. We might have to do a part two. We should right? do part two, guys. I'm telling we you. We are going to do part two. If you want to see the part two, just comment down below. We need part two. And we'll just do it. Wow. Well, if, if you are given the power, okay, or the chance to change one thing about Ghana, what would, what would that be? First thing that came to mind would be those dirty beaches. Oh. <laughs> I can't take it. I'm so, I'm so frustrated um, mm -hmm. because the, the, the coast is so beautiful. Wow. So when I go to beaches mm -hmm. and I see all the debris and all mm -hmm. the plastic waste, it, it really it hurts, your soul. It hurts my wow. soul. So um, I've, I've, I've already put together some collaborative effort okay. to pick up some of the trash. Oh, wow. you know, so I'd like to make some more ads i like to work with people like mm -hmm. yourself who wow. mm -hmm. film and just just go yeah. film clean up the beaches let's put that kind of content out where out people mm -hmm. um get an idea of, wow. you know that's amazing yeah well now i want to ask you you know do you have any regrets since you moved back to to the continent my only regret is that i, I didn't come sooner wow <laughs> that's my only regret but then i don't really regret that because mm -hmm. timing is everything wow you know mm -hmm. um unlike me, my mother and my father didn't have the ability or whatever right. it was that they didn't bring me here. Mm -hmm. Like I brought my twins here. Mm -hmm. So um, they're here a lot younger experiencing what I didn't get to experience. I didn't yeah. get to experience going to school here. They wow. do. Wow. So it's, yeah. Wow. So, I don't have any regrets at all. So it's been worth it for you? It's been you... worth it for me. Wow. It's been worth it for me. And I'm looking forward to the journey because mm -hmm. every day I still feel like I'm just starting. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm just, I just got here, so I'm mm -hmm. just starting and I'm looking forward to, yeah. as I grow and as mm -hmm. I develop, mm -hmm. um, that I, I get to see more and understand more and become more and learn the language and prepare the foods and all these things and mm -hmm. really, really um, get to know myself wow. through being here. Wow. If you have a final message for the people watching, what would that message be? My message would be, come, get here. Come and experience this for yourself. Have your own personal experience. Don't just listen to me. Come and experience it for yourself. That's my final message. All right. Thank you so much for talking <laughs> to me. This has been the end of the uh, episode. We had an amazing conversation. Well, I wish we can talk more. Yeah, <laughs> one of these days we will. Yeah. yeah. Well, so thank you so much for coming. Uh -huh. it's, it's been amazing. Thank you and, for uh, having me. Guys, if it's your first time watching this episode and you really enjoyed it, I want you to please like the video, subscribe, share to friends and family. Don't be selfish so that they can also enjoy. And yes, if you want to share your story or if you want to be on the episode next, I will leave an email in the description or also on the screen. Send me an email and you'll be the next to tell your story. And, uh, this has been one of the episodes. And uh, yeah, peace out. Bye-bye. Bye. Peace out.